Today we have the opportunity to see West Bradford Fire Company, Station 39. COVID is uh, getting handled, so they're starting to open up their stations a little bit. So we're uh, invited in, take a look at their station, see what they have to offer. Great little town, great people. Let's take a look what they got. So Station 39 is a little substation for uh, West Bradford Fire Company. This one uh, has some unique history. This building was built back in 1994 after they did a study in their township and figure out you know, where the best place to put stations. And you know, with the community around us, uh, it was very easy to make access here. The township ended up donating some of the land for them and they built a beautiful station. Obviously because of COVID, you know, they haven't been in the building here and there. Uh, they've been limited to how many people they can have, but it's still a great station. We're gonna take you through some of the trucks they have. Unique thing about this station too is, you know, back in 1953, uh, I believe seven members of the community took a look at it and said, we need to have our own fire station. They were getting support from Westchester, Downingtown, and even Coachville were coming in. They felt they need, had a need, and in 1953, they mortgaged their own houses and created the first fire station, and it's just kind of gone on from there. Right now, they got about 20 active members that run uh, consistently, and uh, they do a fantastic job. As we go up the stairs, we're gonna go into their uh, TV room and where they do a lot of their charting. So just like any EMS or fire station, you have to have the ability to write your charts so here is a nice little station area for them to keep a track of their calls, write down what they need to do uh, for all their reports, and get a great view of the woods up front. So every firehouse needs a place for people to stay, relax, hang out, get to know each other. So as we walk into this next room here, it's gonna be their crew room. They got a couple of recliners here, big TV, foosball tables, those kind of things. You know, it's very important for every firehouse or any place that runs EMS on a consistent basis to create that teamwork. And really, teamwork comes down to knowing each other. So having a place to hang out, uh, joke with each other, tell stories is very, very important. And West Bradford Com Fire Company does that perfectly. So uh, when you're hanging out here, you need a quick way to get down to the fire trucks. And uh, they made it very simple. It's quick, easy access, push the door down the steps, and out to the engine bay. So you just come down the steps, boom, you're right here. You're right at the fire trucks, ready to go. So before we get to the engine bay, we do want to take you over to their training room. Training is very important for every firehouse. You know, many of these guys come in week after week, uh, making sure that they have training. So they got a nice little room here that uh, they're able to sit down, relax, and uh, learn. You know, it's very important to understand how fires work and what equipment to use and how all that kind of stuff. So. Having a training room in a firehouse is very, very important. They have a bunch of tables set up, whiteboard, overhead projector, uh, great things. Uh, keep up the good work, guys. So the other thing cool about firehouses and uh, their areas that they're able to use is they do community outreach. And one of the community outreaches that West Bradford does is they have a group called Healing Waters. It's a bunch of veterans that come in. They learn how to tie flies for fly fishing. This is their toolbox here. They come in once a week, twice a week, and uh, you know they, they get together, hang out, de-stress, and learn how to tie flies. Cool thing about this one is actually they made a fly specific that is called the West Bradford fly. Okay, now let's see what their engine bay looks like. Okay, here at the substation, they have actually a very large engine bay, well lit. Uh, they are able to bring in a fire truck, which is an engine. They got a tack, they got a rescue. They got two apparatuses that are currently for sale, the old uh, pumper and another tack and they also have a brush truck here. So here at Station 39, they supply gear for all of their members. Want to make sure that you're safe, whether you're a junior member, whether you're just a fire indoor, outdoor, or your chiefs. All the fire gear is supplied for you. You get your boots, your pants, your coat, your helmets. As you can see, right down this hallway here, everything's right out in the engine bay, easy access, ready to go, saving that time that you need. So as we were doing our tours, we were able to uh, run into some of their members here. This is Hannah Fairweather. She's one of their junior members. Uh, I didn't want her to talk to you, let you know exactly, you know, one of some of the good things that go on here. So Anna, tell me about yourself and how did you get into the fire service? Um, my name's Hannah, I'm 15, and I started in the fire service or when I was 14. I always wanted to do it because of my family. My mom's an EMT and a firefighter, my dad's a firefighter. I would be the third generation. Wow, okay, okay. What do you like about this whole thing? I like being able to work with 
everyone like we when we work together it's almost seamless and we just get it down it's a big it's like a big family and it's a lot of it's a trust thing so it's the trust thing that you know really gets you involved keeps you going that those kind of things so what's one of your favorite things about the job being able to train with everybody and start like I'm, I'm not able to go into burning buildings or going into calls yet but I like being able to train with them and start learning okay what, what can you do um, I work with hoses ladders I get gear equipment off the trucks for the members so even as a junior member you're a valuable part of the team you know they don't make you feel like you're little or anything like that they put you basically to work you're pulling hose and pulling ladders and those kind of things very cool. Is this something that you're thinking of doing for the rest of your life kind of thing or? Yeah, I've always planned on it since I was little. I've wanted to be an EMT. And then when I joined the firehouse, I started to like it a lot more than I did EMT. And I started to favor it. And I plan on going to fire school for my senior year at the uh, training facility. Okay, all right, all right. Very cool, thank you. And uh, if there's anything we can do, you know, let us know. So the original design of this engine bay was to have it as a pull through. But once they got into it and started actually functioning, they realized fairly quickly that it was much more efficient to actually have four doors. So you, if you need to take a rescue, you don't have to pull out a pumper. Uh, if you need to take the tack, you don't have to pull out something else. So by using all four doors, they're able to make sure that all the apparatus can get out at a reasonable amount of time without waiting for something to be pulled. Uh, but the advantage of this, looking at how big it is, it's very easily to keep clean. So you open up all the doors, pull the trucks out, and uh, clean up everything you need to do. Very cool design. Just like every firehouse, you have to have some kind of engineer's room. This is their engineer's room. Uh, they got washers and dryers for their gear. They got the ice machine. They got work tables to, to you know, work on their equipment, make sure that it's functional. They got a cascade system uh, in order to fill their air bottles and so forth. This is a uh, great little space. Obviously, we pack a lot of stuff into a small area. Uh, but these kind of rooms are essential for every firehouse that you out there. So this is the conclusion of the substation here that was built in 1994. Next thing you're going to see, we're going to go over to the main station, which was built in 1964. Uh, and we'll give you a great tour of that also. So welcome to West Bradford Fire Station 39. This is a unique station. This is uh, the epitome of what EMS and, and fire is all about. They have been around since 1953. This is their main station. And some of the history in this is just phenomenal. Uh, the building to my left here is actually one of the buildings that was here originally back in the 1800s. And what every firehouse does that I know across America has built on and tried to improve the situation. So in the 1960s, they took this 1800 building, added on to it, added the fire uh, side of it. What they did is actually bought property that was here. There were two houses here. They tore those down in order to put their apparatus in. So, you know, overcoming and adapting change is part of the fire service. And West Bradford has been doing a great job in that. And I want to show you some of the buildings, some of the history that goes on here. So as I mentioned, you know, the original building that we're going to be going into was built in the 1800s. And this was a building that they actually used to raise a lot of the funds for the uh, fire company. You know, they would hold uh, socials here. Uh, the, Women's Auxiliary and fundraisers were all done in this area. They have a full commercial kitchen that they would feed the community, bring everybody together. Uh, they you know, do dinners or breakfasts and those kind of things. Uh, it it kind of brings you back to that time of community where people you know, wanted to give back, uh, were part of something. They still use this uh, for some things. They do you know, have breakfast with Santa during the holidays. They don't use it as much anymore. There's other ways to do some finance uh, raising or financial raising. Just the history of this room. It is still rented out to the public. So if you want need a social gathering or something like that, you know, get a hold of them. They might be able to rent it out for maybe a baby shower or, or uh, HOA meetings, that kind of stuff. Because when you rent this, it's definitely gonna help the volunteers that are here. One thing that we have to remember in America, most of our fire departments are volunteer based. You know, the people in the community nowadays think everything is paid for, you know, and the service comes for free, and it's just not true. This is actually a full volunteer service. You know, your fire alarm goes off at three o'clock in the morning. Uh, you're getting people coming from home that's got to come to the firehouse and make it out that way. So we are asking you to come help us. If you have the opportunity to volunteer, please come down, talk to these guys. Uh, they'll get you started. 
They even teach you how to drive the tanker trucks, and I'll show you those in a little bit. So more of the history that's going on here, you know, many firehouses put up their trophy rooms and their plaques and all the past presidents and, and chiefs and that kind of stuff. You know, looking back at some of these fire apparatus and what we used to ride with open cabs, the old Jeeps, this old Jeep up here was actually bought by the Women's Auxiliary. That was their first Jeep, their brush apparatus. And uh, the story is, is that they actually used the s &H green stamps in order to purchase that. So, you know, getting together, understanding that the community is in need and helping each other out is what it's all about. All right, so moving from this community room, I'm gonna take you into the main kitchen. This thing was set up to be a commercial grade kind of kitchen back in the day. They fed, you know, not just hundreds of people over the years, but probably thousands of people. You know, as I was doing this uh, walk around, the chief actually showed me some of the old uh, equipment. They have the old ceramic bowls. Remember those? Man, that brings me back in time. Some of the old glasses and stuff like that. You know, this brings you back in time to when firehouses and volunteerism was a, a big thing. You know, it's a shame that nowadays, you know, volunteerism is backed away so much because community and learning what our brothers and sisters are doing made a real difference uh, in the fire service and in our communities. So the other thing with this old building is, you know, they keep adapting the building to new things. And upstairs in this 1800s building, they actually have two apartments. And, you know, the trend is over the last couple years that I've even known, they have actually sleep in programs for firefighters to you know, have a cheaper apartment, live pretty much on campus, and be able to help out with the volunteerism. You know, you're gonna see that more and more as you go across America, as we go across America together, we're gonna to start seeing a lot of these apartments coming with the firehouses. So this is just finishing up the kitchen here. They got rid of the old refrigerator and, and those kind of things, but they still have, or the dishwasher. They still have the old sinks. Man, imagine having that in your house. You put all your kids to work, making them do the dishes. So as we finished up, you know, this is a small area, uh, but we went through the kitchen, we went through the common area. There is a basement downstairs, but just like any old building, it has its problems. They had a little bit of a flood that happened, so they're in the process of renovating that and uh, making that all good again. A lot of their trophies and awards that they've won over the years were down there. Move those out to the shed, but uh, I can't wait to see what they're going to do with it. Now we're moving out to the engine bay. This is the part that was built in 1960 after they tore down the houses. They have three uh, bays here for the trucks. Looks like they have a, another little utility truck. They have a tanker. Tanker out in this area, in the rural areas of Pennsylvania, and pretty much any rural area, are very important. We have to remember that you know many of our developments don't have hydrants. You know, when you come from the city, you're used to hydrants, but when you get out in the country, there's no hydrants. So having a volunteer service provide a tanker task force or be part of that tanker task force really is what's gonna save you guys. So if you're interested in volunteering and you wanna come down and you're thinking, I wanna drive a tanker, these guys are gonna help teach you how to do that. Come in, volunteer, they'll start you out little, maybe with the utility, work your way through all the apparatuses, all the way up to driving tankers. Pretty cool stuff. So as we make our way around to the back of the shop here, uh, they have a very small desk. You know, just a couple years ago, they finally got a generator for this place. So if they ever lost power, uh, they would lose the ability to communicate with these things. So that's why the substation was built. Uh, but they do have the ability. Obviously, the radio is going on right now. Uh, some other calls going on. At the back of this is where all their gear is, just like their other house. You got there's some nice uh, places to hang your gear, all your equipment. <laughs> One thing that I really loved about this is they love to preserve history, and most firehouses do. If you take a look just above me here, they have an old sign, it says West Bradford Fire Company. This was the original sign since 1953 that hung at the garage, actually it was across the street, probably about 100 yards from here, uh, for the original firehouse in West Bradford. Very cool artwork, is really what it is. So as I'm making my way out of the back of the engine bay here, you can obviously see that it is not a pull through. You know, their other station has that, this is a much smaller garage, but it does have the three apparatus. It has the engine, it has the tanker, it has the utility. Uh, and, you know, just because it's small doesn't mean it's not functional. Small community-based volunteerism is what it's all about. We are on a double yellow road, so, you know, we have to use caution when we're pulling in and out. You hear the traffic going around us. Uh, but, again, great little station, a lot of history here from the 1800s, the rebuild, the add-ons. These are the kind of things that America needs to preserve. 
One of the other things that I noticed when I was actually walking outside, they have the old siren that's uh, on top of the roof, you know, or the horns. Uh, where I grew up, those horns were actually used for tornadoes and hurricanes and that kind of stuff. Uh, but they used to call all the volunteer people out here with the horn. I think they put it out of service back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Uh, they now have pagers that they use, but man, that horn, when you hear that go off, you know it's time to roll. So just like every other firehouse, you know, they're continually thinking of, of the future. And we're gonna go around the corner here to their back garage. They got something real cool, a little side-by-side -side or a UTV, what do you wanna call it? Um, as COVID was, you know, ramping up, they noticed that the community was out and about more. They have close to 1,500 acres of open space that people are walking around. And as we get out and we start to exercise, not all of us are fit enough to do that. So there's been people down, I know of at least six that they had to go out and uh, get people in these open spaces. So what better way to do that is to use a UTV or a side-by-side. -side. So, you know, the firehouse is really progressive. Uh, they wanna make sure that they're serving you guys uh, appropriately. And by getting a side by side to do that is exactly what we need so let's take a look at that all right so they actually went with the gator style uh, UTV and this is a two-year project that they actually figured out they need to bump this up so they were able to purchase this now because of the COVID issues that were going on and uh, they already started outfitting it. it's not quite done but you know they have a seat here for the medic back here is where you're gonna put your Stokes basket for any patients it's big enough to actually carry a family member up front you got some storage uh, in here where you're going to put all your med bags and backboards or whatever you need. Uh, the fact that, you know, a smaller company like West Bradford thinks of these things is tremendous. You know, they're all about the community. They want to make sure that they're serving you appropriately. And by getting equipment like this, uh, with your guys' help, uh, they're going to continue to serve this community for many, many years. So after touring both stations at West Bradford, you can obviously see they have all the equipment to respond at a moment's notice. These are highly trained professionals that are all volunteer based. So they are calling out to you. They would like your assistance. If you have the time and the effort, please come down, volunteer, talk to them. Even if you don't know anything, they're gonna teach you. They're gonna get you up to where you need to be. They'll send you to the classes, give you the equipment. Uh, it's all about community here and you guys are part of it.